Grace and peace to you, dear brethren and friends. I am Sister Karima Paris for the Thusia Seventh Day Adventist Church, welcoming you to our Bible study. As we begin this chapter, chapter or pillar number six in our systematic theology, the seven pillars of the plan of salvation. I invite you to get a copy of this book, this wonderful book that teaches you the details concerning the plan of salvation, what God does in you and for you in his plan, his grand atonement, his great grand atonement. So get a copy of this book on any Amazon market and you would see the beauties of the love of God revealed to you from the scriptures, from the inspired words of God through Brother Nairon Medina in this book. Now let us start with a word of prayer. Gracious loving Father which art in heaven, thank you for your mercies towards me. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to share these words with the people. I pray that they would be blessed and inspired to know you as their God alone and to love you who first love us. In Jesus' holy name, I pray these things. Amen. So, my dear brethren, we would be starting, beginning, this pillar, pillar number six, that is imparted grace or sanctification. And what we would be doing today is two things by God's grace. We would be exegeting from Scripture the cover of this pillar pillar number six and we will take the opportunity as well to read some details so that you can know what god actually does for you in sanctification to ensure and to make sure that you remain sin free let us begin in looking into the details as we exegete the graphics for this pillar in the 1986 edition so there's a 1986 edition that is where we would begin and we will begin by looking at the graphics so my dear brethren we are on the graphics section of our book systematic theology looking at imparted grace sanctification and what you are seeing there my dear friends is water water being poured out upon the converted man the man who has been justified he continues to receive water from god to cleanse him right so this is what we're seeing in our illustration here water being poured out upon the man to cleanse the man what we are seeing also on the screen which we would look into is the fact that we are told that he that is made sin free perfect is yet made perfect we will look into the details concerning what that means we also will look into the details concerning they that be tempted from inward have sinned already. So we are talking about sanctification. And sanctification has to do with the maintaining of righteousness in the soul. Sanctification has to do with you maintaining obedience in you, you maintaining God in you, because sanctification is simply justification continued. And in sanctification, what happens in the experience of the man is that he experienced the dropping off of sins or sins being dropped off. So much so that the things that he used to do before he was converted, he no longer practices them. But the details in systematic theology helps us to understand what happens to the individual in sanctification so that his sins 
will drop off. So we want to look into the scriptures and we want to find out the first thing. What does water symbolize? Because we see that the water is being poured out upon the man. What does this water symbolize? The first scripture we want to look at is in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5 and we are going to look from verse 25 right down to 27. And this is what we are told here. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So we see the provision here. The provision of Christ, him giving himself for the church, is his love to the church. But he, after his provision, what does he do? After the provision, we are talking about now the application of the provision to the man. This is what we are told. He gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So the word of God is used or water is used to symbolize the word of God and what Christ does after he has provided him provided himself for his church is that he sanctifies his church with the word we are told so that the word cleanses the church and let us see why this cleansing why this sanctification is necessary we are told here in verse 27 that christ gave himself for the church and he sanctifies and cleanses the church for this purpose that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish so you see that christ gave himself for us and he is ministering to us his word his word from heaven to cleanse us to sanctify us so that he could present us to himself a sin free people a sin free church so the word is being used god don't pause his word in our minds to cause us to be sin free or to remain sin free let me say that to remain sin free so much so that the sins drop off those sins that the man practiced before he was converted they drop off as a result of sanctification now let us look into the scriptures again and we are going to consider john chapter 17 okay my dear brethren so we're going to look at john chapter 17 verse 17 and verse 19 this is what we are told here sanctify them through thy truths thy word is truth so when we are seeing that the water symbolize the word what the word is it is the word of truth so the word of truth is what christ uses to sanctify his church this is what we are told here again in verse 19 and for their sakes i sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truths so when you read the scriptures and through the holy spirit truths are revealed to your mind these truths are revealed to your mind for your sanctification so what does the water symbolize the water symbolizes truths the word of truth and it is this word of truth that christ uses to sanctify us so 
the atonement does not finish at the cross. Look, Christ wants to sanctify and cleanse us with the washing of water by the word or the word of truth so that we can pre be presented to him as a glorious church, not having spot, not having wrinkle or any such thing, but that we would be holy without blemish. So what Christ desires for his church is that the church be sanctified, the church be sin free, perfect in that while he is made sin free, perfect in justification, Christ wants us to be made perfect where all the sins are dropped off. But we will find out more details as to exactly what God does in us to cause those sins to be dropped off. We'll find out more about it. Now let us look here again and we want to consider john chapter 15 and verse 3 this time as we continue to look at water this is what we are told now you are clean through the word which i have spoken unto you so we we are seeing the effects of the word of truth upon the individual the word of truth is used to cleanse us that is what we are being told it is used to cleanse us from sin in sanctification okay now let us look at the fact that he that is made sin free perfect is yet made perfect let us see something about this in the scriptures under justification god makes the person sin free perfect let us see that god makes the person sin free perfect in justification in romans chapter 6 this is what we are told in verse 6 verse 7 verse 18 19 and 22 this is what we are told in verse 6 and verse 7 knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin you see that for he that is dead is freed from sin or justified from sin this justified from sin is the freeing from sin where sin no longer reign in the consciousness of the man this is what we are told he doesn't have sins within him let us consider now verse 18 this is what we are told in verse 18 being then made free from sin you became the servants of righteousness so you see when you became free from sin you became a servant of righteousness you became a servant of righteousness or free from sin when your old man the old carnal mind the old way of thinking was put to death with the word of truth right or the character of christ now let us see verse 19 and verse 22 that further strengthens this point that you are made sin free perfect in justification this is what we are told here i speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh for as you have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity even so yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness so in justification you are no longer a servant of uncleanness justification makes you a servant of god after you have been freed from sin 
unjustified from the sin so you have sin free perfection in you because there is no values for sin in you when god justifies you this is what we are told in verse 22 but now being made free from sin and become the servants to god ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life so now after you have been made free from sin that means if you are free from sin you are sin free god makes you sin free perfect at justification because he deals with the mind that causes the sin and causes the experience to have perverted emotions flowing in it in justification god deals with the carnal mind and he deals with the carnal mind to stop the flow of sin in you and so you are made free from sin but what we want to see now is that the man even though he has been made sin free perfect he is yet to be made perfect or yet made perfect he is yet made perfect let us see it as we look at philippians in philippians chapter 3 12 to 16 Philippians chapter 3 from verse 12 tells us this about Paul's experience. We are told this. Let us consider verse 7 first. He says, But what things were gained to me, those I count loss for Christ. So he gave them up for Christ, right? And then look at verses 12 to 16, which says, not as though i had already attained either were already perfect but i follow after if that i may apprehend that for which also i am apprehended in christ jesus so look at paul's experience here he said he count all things but loss for the excellency of of the knowledge of christ jesus he count everything but lost for christ and then now he's telling us that not as though i had already attained so what is it he's talking about that he has not already attained he is talking about not attaining sealed perfection at this time this is what he's concluding that he has not attained he says again either was already perfect so the attaining has to do with some kind of perfection and it would be seal perfection because he has already made, been made sin free perfect so if he is talking here about either were already perfect he is talking about a perfection where he is sealed in in sanctification in sanctification one experiences different levels of victories he have abiding victory where he abide in the truths of the character of christ he has conquering victory he has achieved victory and he experiences seal perfection that is what paul is referring to that he has not attained to as yet we will see that is what he is referring to because he is going to tell us that he is perfect let us see it he says here not as though i had already attained neither were already perfect but i follow after if that i may be apprehended that for which also i am apprehended of christ jesus so he is talking about he follow after if that he may apprehend or grasp 
all those things that he, has, he is supposed to experience in Christ Jesus. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended or gained everything from Christ, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That high calling of God in Christ Jesus is when the man experiences sealed perfection where he sins no more. Look at what he's saying in verse 15. Let us therefore, so he's pressing to that, eh? he's pressing to achieving victory, conquering victory, being sealed in perfection. Look at what he says in verse 15, which shows us that he know he was made sin free perfect. He says, let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So he says, you must be minded. You must be minded that you have been made perfect, but you have not, you have not apprehended everything as yet. We have to press to the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. This is what he's showing to us. There's a high calling in Christ Jesus that we must all attain to. We are told that perfection, perfection is every Chris, Christian goal. Reaching that state of sealed perfection. Let us consider also verse 16. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained let us walk by the same rule let us mind the same thing so whatever you would have dropped off whatever sins that you have conquered he is saying let us walk by the same rule so the same experience you had that caused you to drop off or attain conquering victory or achieve victory let us continue let us walk the same rule and let us mind the same thing so that we could reach sealed perfection. This is what he's telling us. And therefore, he that is made sin free perfect is yet made perfect in sanctification. Where you have abiding victory, you have conquering victory over sin, achieve victory over sin, and seal perfection. Sins dropped off by the grace of God, by the grace of God. Now, my dear friends, we want to touch on another aspect that is being shown in the graphics that is being shown on the screen. We are told, they that be tempted from inward, have sinned already we want to see that if you are tempted from within you have sinned already because remember god has already removed the sin values from your mind and made you sin free now if you are tempted from within it means that you have sinned already and you need to be justified again this is what we are told in these two scriptures that will help us to understand that phrase they that be tempted from inward have sinned already let us look at james chapter 1 14 and 15 and 16. let us look at james chapter 1 and see what james tells us in about temptation and sin this is what he says to us in james chapter 1 verse 14 to 16. he says but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived in his mind, it bringeth forth sin in his actions, in his emotions. And sin, when it is finished, 
bringeth forth debt. And he says, do not err, my beloved brethren. So look, we are told what happens to a man who is converted. When he is converted and he falls into sin, he's not converted anymore. But we are just looking at what happens in him for that, so that you could understand what happens in the person, why they fall. We are told that he is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed so the lust starts in the mind it doesn't start in the passions the lust of the mind the things of the mind that gra uh, gravitate or find pleasure in the sins of the world it starts in the mind and it affects the emotion that is why god in justification deals with the mind first so that the body of sin must might be inactivated so we are told that the man is tempted when he is drawn away in his own lust that is inward and after the loss is conceived it bring it forth sin so you see the actions of sin you hear the words of sin you see the behavior of sin all because the man is drawn away in his own loss but look paul admonishes the church do not uh, that is what he admonishes the church now let us see galatians chapter 1 17 and 18 which makes us understand clearly that this drawing away in his own lust is the lust of the mind first because look at what we are told in galatians chapter 1 17 and 18 this is what we are told and all what we are talking about here is important it is necessary let us see because when you're in sanctification if you fall into sin what is needed is justification again because sinfulness or sanctification is in the realm of sinfulness because god makes you free from sin and so you continue in the experience of sinfulness this is what we're told okay galatians chapter 2 i'm very sorry galatians chapter 2 let us read galatians chapter 2 verses 17 and 18 this is what we are told but if while we seek to be justified by christ or sin free by christ we ourselves also are found sinners is therefore christ the minister of sin god forbid but or for if i build again the things which i destroy i make myself a transgressor so that is temptation from within that is you being tempted from within because you build again in your mind the things that you once destroyed the faith once destroyed and you give it up so you build again the things which you once destroyed showing that it if the man be tempted from inward he have sinned already look paul says here paul says that he makes himself a transgressor he say if you be found sinners so being um tempted from within you are found a sinner and you are a transgressor you make yourself a transgressor and you need to be justified again so we wanted to show you those details concerning this wonderful graphics art that was done by brother naira medina to help us understand what sanctification is all about now what we are going to do by god's grace is we are going to look into the systematic theology this uh first edition the 1986 edition and we want to pull out some points that he has given us concerning sanctification for us to see the workings of sanctification what god does in sanctification because sanctification is synergistic we are very grateful to god for his goodness in causing us to understand 
what happens in sanctification and this is some details that we want to look into brief details that we want to look into as we look in the 1986 edition of systematic theology this is part of the details i would like to pull out from this wonderful book that helps us to understand how god saves us his plan his way of salvation so we could appreciate and love our salvation that god has given us love god for the salvation that he has given us this is what we are told here about sanctification right we are told that sanctification is the part of the whole atonement called imparted grace because the graces of the atonement are progressively imparted to the heart to satisfy the conscience with views of the love of God, making the man lose value for the variations of the carnal mind while not holding on to them as loving values and not practicing them. So here we are told about what sanctification is. Sanctification is imparted grace of the atonement. That is what is known as the impart as imparted grace of the atonement. Remember the atonement is the great grand atonement that comprises of providential grace, prevenient grace, renewing grace, imparted grace and judicial grace so when it comes to sanctification it is a part of or it is imparted grace right that is what it is it comes just after justification and we are told that in, in sanctification what god does is that god imparts grace so you experience the imparted grace to satisfy the conscience that God is love. You see, because before in the world, before conversion, men had many things as love, whether it is a man, whether it is a woman, whether it is child, whether it is car, whether it is animals, whether it is money, all different things were seen to be love by him. And he held that value that this woman is love and he would sing those songs that he can't live if living with is without her and so he sees the woman as love but what god does is that god imparts grace to the mind to satisfy the conscience that god is love listen the woman is not love the man is not love having sexual relations is not love god is love and god is eternal the woman is not eternal the woman is not life the woman is not god or the creation is not god they cannot cause you to experience true love but in sanctification god imparts his grace to satisfy the conscience that he god is love and in understanding the plan of salvation in understanding what god does for depraved man you actually see in the understanding of the plan of salvation the pillars of the faith the pillars of systematic theology you get to understand the plan of salvation and you are able to indeed see that God is love. And so what he does is he imparts grace in the conscience to satisfy the conscience so that you will see that he is love. Sanctification is imparted grace because the imparted grace causes the person to lose the values for the variations of the carnal mind not holding them neither practicing them you see because when god destroys the idol values when god destroys those idol values in your mind and make you say oh god look at what i was holding on to i thought uh this partying and this drinking of alcohol was something that will satisfy me but it always left me disappointed it always left me with a need 
God causes you through imparted grace to see that the carnivalin and the partying and the fetting and the fornication and the sex is not God and it is not love and he destroys it in the mind with rational faith that faith that com combats and give a strong argument to prove the god aloneness of god in comparison to the idol values of sin the variations of the carnal mind or the formations of sin that you would have developed while you were yet unconverted now let us go and let us see something else what we see too is that this sanctification which is imparted grace that satisfies the mind that god is love and that causes the man to lose the value for the variations of the carnal mind what does this cause it causes the man not to hold them in his mind as valuable and therefore the man is not practicing them it therefore means sanctification the work of sanctification and god continual impartation of grace to the mind is to maintain you in the experience of sinfulness or to maintain you in obedience that is what it is about and that is god's love to you he wants to unfold to your mind that he is love in comparison to all the things that you would have exalted to be god to be life to be love to be eternal to be divine all the things that you would have exalted god mashes them up he destroys them with his dialectical faith that strong argument that shows you that these things are nothing and it's just a waste of time practicing them let us go on and let us see something else about sanctification so we want to touch on the fact that when it comes to sanctification it is righteousness by faith also because righteousness by faith includes sanctification let us read and see what brother naira medina tells us here as we understand the details about sanctification the working of god to sanctify you we see we are sanctified by the truth but look we are seeing the action of god in sanctification as well action god's action direction this is what we are told here righteousness or justification by faith includes sanctification as a tag along it is faith that communicates righteousness to the heart for conviction so that when the soul repents and believes god imputes the righteousness to the soul making him righteous or making the righteousness belong to him or belong to the soul thus the man is justified so justification comes after the man repent and believe those things take place under the calling or prevenient grace so after the man responds have the appropriate response of repentance and believing god imputes righteousness to the soul making the man righteous or making the righteousness belongs to the man so god imputes it so that it could be imparted or given into the man thus the man is justified so when it comes to righteousness by faith righteousness by faith is being justified by faith let us go on to read now when the man is justified what are we told god esteems the man righteous by attributing his righteousness of faith to the soul to continue this process which is called sanctification god must not now justify the soul for the first time as if that was not done before god must now continue this service in the soul by continually imparting faith for righteousness into the soul so when it comes to justification it is god continuing to impart righteousness to the soul 
or giving you righteousness in you so that as the man continually repents and believes God continuous unbroken estimation of the man as righteous is his sanctification so even in sanctification you experience conviction you experience repentance and believing but you are not falling into sin you are not falling into sin at that time you just experience continual repentance and believing as god causes you to see the errors of your ways and as you continue to experience that repentance and believing god continues to look at you estimate you as being righteous an unbroken estimation of the man as righteous and that is the man's sanctification let us continue to read thus the same process that happens in justification with the exception of transforming the man out of subjective sins into righteousness subjectively happens in sanctification so god continues the process of causing you to experience repentance and believing so that you could receive the impartation of grace so each time he just calls you to repent and believe as he he shows you the errors of your ways that you live is to bring you to repentance and believing for continued uh, impartation of righteousness. This is what we are told here. Thus, the same process that happens in justification, with the exception of transforming the man out of subjective sins or sins within into righteousness, subjectively the righteousness goes in here, so the sin is removed, he, trans he is transformed. There is no subjective sin or inner sin. He has righteousness in him subjectively, not on some account. This happens in sanctification. And as justification is by faith in the sense of communication, so is sanctification as so is sanctification. Sanctification is the communication of righteousness in you by the faith of Jesus. That is what it is. So as faith places righteousness into the soul for imputation, so it places righteousness into the soul for continual unbroken imputation, but not to deliver from practice sins because they are not being practiced by the converted man. And this is our sanctification. Thus righteousness by faith is both justification and sanctification so did you see what happens the very same process you go through in justification is the very same process you go through in sanctification with the exception of you being transformed you are transformed in at justification but you are not transformed in sanctification all God do is continue to communicate faith to you for the righteousness and you continually repent and believe to get that righteousness in you that is what it is about you don't practice any sin in, con in sanctification and so that is what sanctification is about so what did we learn there about sanctification? Sanctification is a tag along to righteousness by faith that made the man righteous at justification. It is God continually impart faith for righteousness in the man. It is that the man continually repents and believes and that God, it is God's continuous estimation of the man as righteous so as the man continually repents and believe as god continually impart faith for righteousness in the man god continuously estimates the man to be righteous and this is his sanctification this is the sanctification of the man that he experiences yes my dear brethren those are all the wonderful things that we would have seen concerning sanctification as we look into the details of what God does in us.
to preserve us in the experience of sinfulness. And we are so grateful for his love. We will have to stay here for today, but we will certainly continue looking into the delicacies of sanctification. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Gracious loving Father, we thank you so much for revealing your love towards us. Today, as you show us how you maintain your gift of sinfulness in us. May we love thy salvation, dear Holy Father, and may we love you with all our heart, soul, and mind. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen.